All right, so I said galvanic slash voltaic slash batteries all spontaneously generate electrons. Electrolysis is the exact opposite process. So I have to hook up a battery or I have to hook up something like to the wall to provide electricity for this reaction to occur. So when we say voltage for source, that could be a battery already, or it could be like a plug straight into the wall sort of situation. Okay. So in an electrolytic cell, um, the cathode, the cathode is negatively charged and the anode is positively charged. The anode is still the source of the electrons because the battery is pulling it from the anode and pushing it into the cathode. Okay. So instead of the activity of, of the anode driving the reaction, now we have an outside energy source that's driving the reaction. It's pulling from the anode and pushing it into the cathode. Um, So this charge is actually opposite of what we saw for a galvanic cell. Cathodes are positive in, in spontaneous reactions and anodes are negative in spontaneous reactions. The, the direction of electron travel is toward the cathode in an electrolytic cell. Just like it is in a galvanic cell, the electrons are still going towards the cathode in both of them. It's just a matter of the charges being different because we're forcing the reaction to go in a non-spontaneous direction. Oh, and the fact that it's non-spontaneous connects with free energy, right? So we would expect the delta G of electrolysis to be positive and the delta G of voltaic cells to be negative. So one simple example of electrolysis is if you connect water to an electrical source, like connecting it to the wall. Um, you will take H plus at the cathode. You'll need two of them. You'll take H plus at the cathode. And we're going to add two electrons and you're going to get hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's the cathode reaction. The anode is going to take the hydroxide Oops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's going to take the hydroxide and it's going to react it so that you produce oxygen. Now this reaction is a little less straightforward. I'm going to actually rewrite it down here so we can see. So you're going to end up with two hydroxides and um, it's going to form water plus half of an oxygen and two electrons. So to actually get, you know, a full oxygen, you need to double everything. But here we see that the two electrons are balanced. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. It means you produce one O, but O doesn't exist by itself. So that's weird. Anyways, so the products here, you're going to release oxygen gas and you're going to release hydrogen gas. And that requires energy to be put into the system to do that. It's not a spontaneous process. You're going to have a delta G that's positive. Okay. So, but we can still label them as oxidation and reduction, right? So in the example of water electrolysis, uh, hydrogen is gaining electrons. So that's reduction. And we said that hydrogen happens at the cathode. And the oxygen is being produced at the anode. And that is losing electrons. So that's oxidation. So the only thing that's really different is the, the delta Gs, of course, will have a different sign, positive. The anode still has oxidation. The cathode still has reduction. And the other thing that's different besides the sign of delta G is the sign of the charge at each location. So cathodes are negative and anodes are positive because we're forcing the electrons to go where they don't want to go. OK, you can actually take regular old pennies, which are zinc coated in copper as long as they're minted after 1985. And you can you can use base to turn them into brass, essentially. So you sort of mix the zinc and the copper together. Um, and that's how it make, you make it look like a gold penny. 
Um, the silver happens when you precipitate zinc on top of the copper. And then you heat it up a little bit and you make a little bit of gold penny. And it's kind of cool. You can, you can find all kinds of videos online about that. Um, but I mention it just because it's really cool. And I still have the, the pennies I made as a nine-year-old child at some summer camp thing that my mom <laughs> sent me to because I don't stop asking questions. <laughs> um, they do wear off over time. It's a very thin layer. So if you rub it a lot, it'll, it'll wear off, but it's kind of cool to do. Um, please adhere to all chemical safety rules if you do this at home. Okay, so these are the life hack things. And the one that surprised me the most that I wish I had known as a child is this one. So I um, come from a very large family and I am the oldest granddaughter. So my task was always to polish the silverware before big family gatherings at my grandmother's. And um, the stuff you used to do that is, is very corrosive. It, it irritated my skin a lot. And it turns out there's a much easier, cheaper, faster way to do it. And basically you just take a container and you put aluminum foil in the bottom, you sprinkle some salt and some acid in like vinegar or lemon juice or something. And then you place your tarnished silver items on top of the aluminum foil. And in a few minutes, the tarnish will be on the aluminum instead of the silver. So this is better than polishing because polishing literally removes the tarnished layer. So tarnish is just, oxidized um, metal. And so by rubbing it off, all you're doing is, is reducing the detail in your silverware or your jewelry. You're literally removing the silver. So this redox process is much better because it doesn't remove the silver. It replaces it back with pure silver instead of oxidized silver. So that's awesome. Also, who likes yucky apple slices, right? So if you slice your apple in the morning and then you look at it at lunchtime and it's all brown, that's because of an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. It causes the fruit to brown. It doesn't actually change the taste at all. It just changes the texture a wee bit. You can stop that by sprinkling some acid on your apples, which prevents the enzyme from oxidizing, at least for a while. Also, redox super important for us biology major types because um, everything in the human body is a redox process. Breathing, uh, metabolism, um, photosynthesis, everything. <laughs>